What's happening? It's Shane here. So today I'm going to be going over the top 10 bank accounts out there. Now a lot has changed over the last few years. There are some bank accounts that offer much better rates than others. Now a lot of traditional banks only offer you somewhere between 0.01 and 0.02% interest on savings accounts for instance, whereas online banks and some of the newer banks out there will offer you over 1% interest. That is a huge difference. On top of that there are still many bank accounts out there that will charge you ridiculous hidden fees for just random stuff, fees for sending or receiving money, fees for replacing your debit card after a few years, fees for forgetting to update your address within a certain amount of time, and the list just goes on and on. Over the last few years there have been a few different types of bank accounts that have stood out and they have shown that they are winners over the other ones. So if you appreciate me going through all this time to research and in many cases actually just start an account with these in order to figure out if they're worth it or not, then please go ahead and smash the like button in order to defeat the evil YouTube algorithm. Now there's some banks that are just really good overall, but there's also banks that are going to be better in specific situations. For instance, if you travel a lot, there's one bank that clearly stands head and shoulders above all of the others. So I'm gonna be breaking down what banks are just good overall and then also which banks are right for you to depending on whatever situation that you're in. Now, number 10 on the list is technically not going to be a bank account. However, they do have a savings account and that is going to be Wealthfront. So when I first signed up for Wealthfront, they offered a 2.57% interest on their cash management or in other words, savings account. On top of that, they were FDIC insured up to $1 million, which usually a lot of bank accounts are just FDIC insured up to 250,000. By the way, all the bank accounts that I mentioned are going to be FDIC insured at the time that I did the research up to to at least 250,000. That's something you should always check out with bank accounts, make sure they're insured so that if the company goes down or anything like that, you can still get your money back. So I used Wealthfront for a while, primarily for my emergency fund, and I was extremely happy with them because they were giving me 2.57% interest, and overall their service was just really good. However, due to recent events, they dropped the savings account down to 0.35% interest, and I'm not very happy about that. I'm hoping it's just a temporary situation because of the pandemic that's going on right now. Hopefully they return back to offering over 2% on their savings account after all of this stuff is over. So if they didn't do this, I would have ranked them a lot higher on the list, but it kind of just seems like almost like a marketing tactic where they offer something really good and then you sign up for it and they take it away from you and it kind of just seems like a bait and switch. But hopefully I'm wrong about that and they return back to offering over 2% on their accounts like they were before. So if they don't fix this soon, I will end up leaving them and I'll probably never use their service again. But before all that happened, their service was excellent. I really enjoyed using it and I think they make a really good savings account overall. Number nine on the list is going to be PNC Bank. So PNC Bank is one of the largest banks in the entire country. I believe they're actually the sixth largest overall. They do have a good reputation overall and it seems like they are customer focused and they always put the customer first. They are pretty competitive when it comes to interest rates and the lack of fees. And they actually do have some of the best customer service overall out of the ones that I looked at. So there's just one really big problem with this one is that they only offer their service in select states. So if you want to check out the website and see where they offer their services, if you don't live in one of those states, I wouldn't even consider this one, of course. But if you do live in one of those states, you should be looking into this one. Number eight on the list is going to be CIT Bank. And this one is a primarily online bank. Now, when it comes to the interest that they offer on their savings account, this is one of the best options on the entire list. They're always competitive when it comes to the interest on their long-term high yield savings accounts. On top of that, you're not going to have any of those stupid, annoying, pesky monthly fees that you find with a lot of the other banks. Now, some of the online banks don't offer checking accounts, and that is not a problem with CIT. They actually do offer a checking account, which is another plus. But the big downside to this one is that they do not offer a free ATM network. This means that if you want to use an ATM, you'll likely have to pay fees for it, and that is a huge downside to using CIT and I'm really not sure why they don't just offer that. They have checking accounts set up anyways so why not? So for that reason they didn't rank higher on this list but overall it's a very good one if you want to just create an emergency fund for instance. Number seven on the list is going to be Discover Bank. Now Discover is a really big name out there. You probably have heard of the Discover credit card for instance and this one actually does offer one of the best banking experiences that you can get. Now they only have one physical branch and so they are primarily just an online online bank. They do pretty much everything online. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I actually prefer online 
banking overall, just because of the fact that there are way less fees and way less overhead for the company and therefore they get to pass a lot of that savings onto you. Now they might not have very many physical branches and depending on the person that might be very important to you, but they do have a network of over 60,000 ATMs across the entire country. On top of that, they have a high interest savings accounts that's very competitive with all of the others across the industry. And then this one is known for having really good customer service as well. Overall, this one is pretty much just a complete package. It's really not bad at all. It's just there's others that are a little bit better on the list. Number six on the list is going to be Capital One 360. So this is another example where a big credit card company got into the banking game and they're basically offering a lot of different banking services that are pretty good. There's not gonna be any physical branches, but the online experience is top of the line. It's truly one of the best out there. So this is another option where there's a ton of ATMs available out there. There's over 38,000 in their network. And that's always a really good thing to see when it comes to online bank accounts is you wanna make sure that they have ATMs out there because sometimes you're just gonna need to get actual cash. And from the research I did, this seems like this is one of the only online bank accounts that will actually allow you to deposit cash using the ATM itself. With other bank accounts, you'd have to basically deposit the cash at a physical location and then wire the money to that bank account online. That's not a problem with Capital One 360. It looks like they've made that something that you don't have to worry about anymore. So that's why they ranked a little bit higher than Discover on this list. Number five on the list is going to be Fidelity Cash Management Account. Now, technically, the Fidelity Cash Management Account is a brokerage account. This means that it's not a bank account and it doesn't have the same regulations or offerings that a bank account would have. However, I did make sure that the money you put into this account is still FDIC insured. And the reason for that is because they work with other bank accounts around them. And I have to admit, when I was doing all of the research for different credit cards, bank accounts, and everything, it does seem like Fidelity just pops up over and over and over again on every single list. And that shows how much of a focus and emphasis they have on the entire customer experience. It's obvious that they are just dedicated to delighting their customers and giving the most value possible. And on top of that, their apps are just really user-friendly. I'd have to say maybe the most user-friendly out of any on the entire list. So this is basically just a brokerage account that offers an option for short-term spending if you want it. What this means is you can invest your money, but at the same time, if you need some of that money to spend on things on a day-to-day -day basis, you can also have that as well. And a lot of companies that I look up when it comes to bank accounts or credit cards or you know different investing or brokerage firms will have one offer that's really good and then all of the other ones are just eh, they're okay. But it seems like Fidelity is just really good across the board and this really just shows where their priorities are as a company. Number four on the list is going to be Alliant Credit Union. Now if you're familiar with what a credit union is, it's basically kind of like a bank but at the same time it's more of a non-profit organization where everybody who stores their money there actually owns part of the bank. Now a lot of credit unions offer offer better interest rates than banks do just because they don't have as much overhead and they aren't subjected to a lot of the same regulations that banks are. The downside to a lot of credit unions though is there's a strict membership policy where you have to get accepted so it's not just as easy as walking into one and getting accepted right away. And then a lot of the time credit unions do lag behind banks when it comes to technology. And then another thing is a lot of credit unions are just local so if you decided to travel to another part of the country for instance you might not be able to access your money nearly as easily. Now, the thing about Alliant is they are an online credit union. So they've basically combined the best of a bunch of different worlds. Credit unions costs are very low as it is, but when you're an online credit union, your costs are even lower. And so they get to pass that on to the customer. Now, one thing that you do have to worry about with some credit unions is you might not have access to your money if you go across the country and you might think, ah, they probably don't have access to very many ATMs. And so you're going to have to get an ATM fee if you do try to access your money. So you might be surprised to hear that Alliant Credit Union has the most ATMs out of anything on this entire list at over 80,000. That's 80,000 free ATMs that you can access all across the United States. There's a lot to love here about Alliant Credit Union. I really do think they're headed in the right direction. I kind of want to use them a little bit more in order to get more familiar with them. But overall, I really like what I'm seeing from Alliant Credit Union. Number three on the list is going to be Ally Bank, and they have consistently been one of the best over the last few years. Out of all of the ones on this entire list, they have some of the best apps and user interface in general. You can tell that they really know what they're doing when it comes to creating apps that are just super easy and just seamless and flawless. An Ally is an online bank account, so they're able to not have 
all of those costs that brick and mortar bank accounts have. And so therefore they're able to pass down all of the savings to their customers. Now they consistently offer some of the best interest rates on their savings accounts. You see this time and time again, they're very competitive with the rest of the market. Uh, about a year ago or so, it was well over 2%. Now I think it's just a little bit over 1%, but still it's definitely competitive with everyone else on the market. And you will occasionally see people offer better interest rates than them. But a lot of the time, like I explained before, it's some kind of promotional thing where they're going to get you to put your money with them and then they're just going to take it away and it's not as good. But I have seen Ally consistently give really good savings account rates and I kind of trust them more than a lot of the new apps and the new online banks out there just because I've seen them consistently put the customer first and the customer experience first and give some of the best rates. So these last few were honestly really difficult to rate, but I'm going to just go ahead and do number two here, which is going to be your local credit union. And in my opinion, I think everybody should have at least one physical bank account where they can go to just in case their identity gets stolen or you know something gets hacked or something along those lines. It's good to be able to just talk to a real person. And if you're going to have a physical bank account, in my opinion, the best one that you can possibly have is just to go and get a membership at a local credit union. Now, credit unions are known for having like the most amazing customer service. Like it is an incredible experience in terms of customer service. So if that's something you're into, you like talking to real people and having really good customer service, credit unions almost always deliver the best. They're gonna have really good savings account rates. They're not gonna charge you any of the dumb fees that a lot of the other ones do. And the weakness of you know them not being everywhere is kind of mitigated a little bit just because a lot of the credit unions form networks with each other. So you can actually access your money at a different ATM and maybe a different state just because they're in the same network. Now you can find a really good credit union and a really good uh, network by going to a smarterchoice.org. Basically just type in your zip code there and it'll give you the best options. Number one on the list is going to be a company that offers an exceptionally good banking experience. And this is one of those companies that I have seen over and over again, just really focus on their customer. And that is going to be Charles Schwab. Now I first learned about Charles Schwab when I was hanging out with people who travel a lot. And they basically just told me that all of these other banks are charging them outrageous fees whenever they travel and they go abroad. Whenever they're trying to get access to their cash or just take money out of their ATM, they will get charged crazy fees for that. And it was really eating away at their money. Charles Schwab, on the other hand, basically you know, first of all, they wouldn't charge any ATM fees as long as you're in the ATM network. But if you do get charged any fees, they would actually cover all of them for you. That's right. If you go somewhere and the ATM charges you like $3 to withdraw $100 or something ridiculous like that, Charles Schwab will actually cover that $3 for you. Now, on top of that, they really just have a good overall experience. You can tell that whether you're looking at credit cards, investment apps, or anything like that, Charles Schwab is one of those companies that's trying to create an amazing experience for you. This is a company that I think has a lot of integrity as well, so I really trust them. And overall, I don't think you can go wrong banking with Charles Schwab. Now, a few things about this list that might help you choose the best option for you. I just kind of want to go over my thought process when I was making this list. First of all, I do think that you should have at least one physical bank and one online bank, but I think that your primary bank should be online. The reason for this is because they have so many less fees. They charge you so much less in terms of, you know, ATM fees and all that sort of thing because of the fact that they don't have an overhead, they don't need to make as much money off of you. And so they pass the savings on to you. So online banking is definitely better than banking at a physical branch when it comes to saving money. However, I do still have a physical bank account just in case something happens, like my house gets burned down, my identity gets stolen or something along those lines. I want to be able to have a physical bank account that I can walk into and there's people that I know. There's some people out there that have zero physical bank account and you know, kudos to them. That's really cool that they're able to do that but that's just not something that I'm comfortable with myself. But anyways, check out my video right here. I made them just for you. Go ahead, smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, comment down below any comments, criticisms, etc., or any thoughts that you have about different bank accounts that you've used. Thank you so much for watching and bye for now.